Pro for Android has some different settings than DJ Pro for the iPad. So in this short video, I want to show you which settings I recommend changing and what all the settings do and where to find them. So to get to your settings in DJ Pro for Android, we're going to press this record deck icon. And then now we can access our view modes and our settings. Unfortunately, we only have three view modes in DJ Pro for the Android, but our settings is going to be right here, right below the classic mode. So we're going to press that. And now this opens up our settings. So up here is our main volume. The next one is going to be for our pre-queuing. So it doesn't look like you could press it because it's dark, but you could press it and it turns on your split output. And if you are using a headphone splitter, you could use your headphones while you're just DJing with your Android device. Or if you're DJing with a Bluetooth controller like the Hercules DJ Control Mix. I made a separate video on pre-queuing, so you could check that out. So I'm just going to turn it off. So I'm just going to go in order. I'm going to start at general and go all the way down. So in general, there is a very important setting that I would definitely recommend turning off. And that is start playback. So right now I have it off. So when I load up a song, the song loads up and it's not playing. But if we have this setting on, start playback. As soon as you load up a song on a deck, it's going to start playing which I find to be super annoying. I like to be in control of when the song is playing. If you're used to this feature on other devices or other software or hardware, then you can leave it on. Personally, for me, I recommend leaving it off, but that is where, where you're going to find it. Now, the next one I want to talk about is Protect Active Deck. So with this on, if you're playing a track, so this track on the right is playing, track's playing. And now if you accidentally go and press the wrong side of the music selectors, and you load up a song while there's volume going, you will get this message. And it says, right deck protected. You are about to add a song onto an active deck. Do you want to proceed? So if you did mean to put a song on that deck, you could press load. But if it was an accident and you meant to do it on the other side, then you could press cancel. So it saves you from making one of the worst DJ mistakes, which is completely cutting out the music. Next one is the tempo range. I would recommend keeping it in the middle so you could do precise BPM changes. There's other ways to access this besides in the settings, so it's not that important to know that setting. And then here, start time and stop time. So if you raise the start time, it's going to have to build up RPMs. So now it's at one second. And it's going to slowly get up to the speed that you want it to be at. I find it annoying, especially on start playback. So I would keep it off at zero. And then it's the same thing with the stop time. That will mean, means it takes longer for it to stop. The only time I would use this is for large BPM, the small BPM transition, because you kind of hear like that crashing noise. So that's in general. Next, we are going to go to sound. And this is another very important setting, make sure it's on, is auto gain. So to control the gain in this software, the only controls that you have are going to be these tiny buttons here right above the volume. And they're kind of impossible to use, really hard to use. But with auto gain on, so look at where the gains are. As I change the song, it is going to adjust the gain automatically so that both songs are at similar similar volume. So most softwares or hardwares or however you DJ, you're used to using the gain all the time. For this software, you're probably not going to use the gain, so keep this setting on. Next is audio limiter. This will prevent you from breaking speakers, like if you're DJing at a club or something, they have some big speak expensive speakers. This is a good safety feature. Keep it on so that you will not have clipping or distortion on your audio signal. Made a separate video about auto mix, so we're not going to talk about that here. And the last one I'd want to talk about is the auto select for pre queuing. So if you have the headphones, if you have the headphones split, then it is going to automatic. It's going to automatically select which side for the headphones to be on. So it's going to choose which side the headphones are going to be on. So if your crossfitters to the right, your headphones will be on the left. If your crossfitters to the left, your headphones will be on the left. And it also works with the volume sliders too. So whichever track has no volume coming out, it's going to automatically select where your headphones are going to be. And then this gives you a good option to map buttons on your controller so you could map these headphone buttons to be effects. Uh, that's what I usually do with these smaller controllers. 
And the last one I want to talk about isn't really a setting, but it's a new feature, and that is light mode. So now it's like a white background instead of a dark one, so it's going to be easier to see in different lighting environments, and I just think it looks super cool. And if you want to see my full beginner tutorial on this amazing software for Android, check out this video over here. Thank you.